If you suffer from acid reflux or hiatal hernia symptoms and you've been thinking about getting surgery, then I want to share this information with you. First of all, I'll tell you a little story about a patient I'm going to call Anne. She's 58 years old and she had surgery close to two years ago now. And what led up to it was she was on PPI medications. So those are antacids and she was on that for eight years and it stopped working and what she was suffering from was just 24 7 reflux she also had ringing in her ears she had tendinitis so she was getting not only worried about the side effects of ppis that are very well known but it just wasn't working for her anymore and that's a lot of the reason that people do surgery which she did so she did the surgery. I'm going to describe it as far as what it does and the benefits in just a moment. But continuing with what we're calling Anne's story at the moment is she had the surgery and things were great for a year. And then the symptoms came back and she had the 24 seven reflux again. So it didn't matter whether she was eating, drinking, not sipping water. She just had acid reflux all day, all night. So pretty miserable. Uh, so she came to us and she's only a month into care. Our, our programs last about three to four months. So I'm not giving you a conclusion, but just to sort of set the stage for what we're going to be talking about. Um, all we've done thus far is change her diet and uh, her symptoms are vastly improved. She just reported day before yesterday that she had 24 hours with absolutely no symptoms, which is great. And we haven't even delved into the results. We just got back on her microbiome testing, which shows a lot of bad bacteria, a specific bacteria in the stomach, etc. So we haven't even jumped on that, which is an integral part of the program. My reason for this is that when you hear about the surgery as a patient, it sounds great. It's like, wow, you have this surgery. You won't need to take the PPIs any longer. You won't have the acid reflux any longer. You're cured. And a lot of, and I hear this a lot on my channel where people say, you know, you talk about your program and relieving symptoms and getting benefit. There's only one solution and it's surgery. And I understand how people come out of conversations with surgeons feeling very strongly about that. And certainly there are people that get surgery that do very well, but it's important to know the pros and the cons and exactly what you should and could expect. And that's what I want to jump into today. So let's start with the surgery. So it's called a fundiplication. The fundus is just the top of the stomach. So the stomach is a kidney shaped organ. So it's, there's a little sort of blip at the top and then it widens out. And that blip is called the fundus. So, so fundiplication, plication is folding. And that's exactly what they do. They take that little top bit of the stomach and they fold it around the esophagus. So it looks like a donut around the esophagus. And what it's doing is it's stabilizing um, the sphincter or valve that's naturally at the base of your esophagus, which tends to uh, get mal, you know, it starts to malfunction with uh, reflux because of pressure. And if you have a hiatal hernia, the stomach is pushed above it so it's basically re-engaging that with changing your anatomy, wrapping a bit of the stomach around it. And it's and what you're told is, hey, if you have chronic reflux, if you're worried about the danger of long term PPIs, if the drugs have stopped working for you, as was with the case with Anne, um, and you've got or you've got really bad esophagitis, so the inflammation of the esophagus, etc. If you've got these symptoms, then surgery is the answer. So let's, let's look at now the risks and the side effects that you could potentially expect. One is having trouble swallowing. So there's definitely patients who are just on applesauce consistency food because it's really hard for them to swallow. Sometimes that goes away. Sometimes it doesn't. There's also something called the gas bloat syndrome, and that is that people can't belch and they can't vomit. So vomiting is never fun, but if you have to do it, you want to know that you're able to and belching. Unfortunately, you tend to get increased gas as one of the side effects after the surgery. So you get increased gas, which is probably something that led up to 
you wanting to get the surgery because you've got the gas and the bloat and the reflux. Uh, so you've got the increased gas, but now you can't belch. So that's going to be really uncomfortable and waiting for that gas to move all the way down your, you know, close to 30 feet of intestines. That's not going to be very pleasant. The biggest risk that we're looking at is the loosening of the wrap. So they call that, you know, the fundoplication. It's wrapping around the base of the esophagus and it loosens, which means the surgery becomes undone and now you've got all your symptoms back again. And that's really what I want to focus on is, is why does it become undone? Why does the wrap loosen? The surgery does not address any of the root cause factors that led to the reflux and the hiatal hernia, which here at the clinic, we're called root cause medical clinic. That's all we do is get to the root cause. And so uh, it, the surgery, of course, is just going in and mechanically changing your anatomy. It's not doing anything to get to the root cause. And the root causes are you've got the gas and the bloat. You've got sometimes small intestinal bacterial overgrowth often something called dysbiosis, which means you have more bad bacteria in your colon than good bacteria. You get increased what's called intra, meaning within the abdomen pressure. That pressure is what's forcing the stomach up, and that comes from the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, the dysbiosis, uh, being overweight will also cause pressure on your organs in your abdomen. There's also impaired stomach emptying, which means uh, a lot of times people with this problem actually don't have enough stomach acid, even though they're on an antacid, because as we get older, we tend to produce less acid and they have slowed stomach emptying. Now that can happen due to getting older and not having enough acid. It can also happen because you have a lot of bad bacteria uh, in the stomach as well as the intestines. And it's a bit of a catch-22. You get on a PPI, which lowers your acid content, then bad bacteria can procreate. That leads to gas and bloating. It also leads to a slowed motility of not just your stomach, but your entire intestines. The vagus nerve gets affected, which has a great deal to do with motility. So they all kind of work together but the surgery is not addressing any of that. On top of the surgery is not addressing your, the strength of your diaphragm. And it has a function to act as an, a natural anti-reflux barrier. So just the way the surgery is designed to support that lower sphincter or valve of your esophagus that is supposed to be an anti-reflux barrier so that acid doesn't come up the wrong way, so is your diaphragm. And there's, there's research, and I'll put it in the description of this video, that shows how a properly functioning diaphragm acts as this secondary support of the esophagus to prevent reflux. So working with diaphragmatic function is, is something that we do a lot and, and there's certain exercises you can do on your own. They're free, uh, easy to do, but very important to do. So the surgery doesn't address any of that. And it is those very things that I just listed. I listed about five different things that are actually, because they're not addressed, they're causing that increased pressure. It's that pressure that is causing the loosening of the wrap. And that's what research says is the most common reason the surgery fails over time. Because short term, it has decent success. Now, our, our patient Anne only enjoyed a year. It's five, 10 years of decent success. And then the wrap loosens. And this is up to 40% of, of patients. So this is not a five or 10% type of phenomena where, where it loosens and reverts. This is up, up to almost a, a coin toss, right? 40% uh, can, can have this loosening of the wrap. And the loosening is coming from the exact reasons that the, the acid reflux and the hiatal hernia happen. So why don't we just address that naturally? And then we have a, a full picture. And so it's so interesting when you know people <laughs> on my channel say, no, the only way to fix it is to do the surgery. 
the surgery doesn't even claim to fix it. It's talking about relief of symptoms, you know, lessening your, your need for medication, sometimes eliminating it, sometimes lessening it. They, they understand that it's a short-term benefit and a long-term liability as far as it's not a fix. It can come undone. Also, when you talk about revision surgery, that fails 40% of the time, and most doctors will only do one, maximally two of these go in and try to fix it again surgeries, because unfortunately complications rise each time you do a revision surgery. So am I saying nobody should ever get surgery? I'm not. Uh, Sometimes surgery is an emergency situation, and thank goodness for those surgeons who know what to do. So I'm not arguing that point. The point I want to make is that apprise yourself of the expectations. What is actually expected from these surgeries? What are the liabilities? I haven't even gone into something called dumping syndrome, which uh, about 10% of people suffer with, which is that their stomach can't hold on to food, their intestines can't hold on to food to, in order to properly break it down and absorb it. So you have this, what's called dumping, because things just move through too rapidly through your intestines and you're suffering from explosive diarrhea. You can you know, have trouble leaving the house for a period of time because the food's gonna go right through you. And of course, if it's going right through you, you're not absorbing important nutrients. So it's a dangerous problem. And the other really scary part about the surgery is that your vagus nerve can be damaged and there's really no recourse from that. And the vagus nerve goes to not just your entire digestive tract, but it also goes to your heart, it goes to your lungs. So a lot of the symptoms associated with hiatal hernia syndrome from the heart palpitations and the shortness of breath affiliated with the stomach getting pushed up and the acid reflux and the go the, the, sorry, the gas and the bloat, uh, constipation, sometimes diarrhea, all these symptoms are tied together and they have a common thread to your vagus nerve. So now you get surgery and your vagus nerve is damaged, you really can't come back from that. So same thing with the dumping syndrome. So I just wanted to provide the knowledge so that you go into this very wide eyed. Uh, a lot of times these surgeries are happening with small to medium sliding hiatal hernias. Now 95% of them are sliding. So the vast, vast majority. What that means is the stomach pushes up, but then it goes back down and it pushes up and it goes back down. Well, if it can go back down, it can mostly stay back down if you do the right things that are preventing it pushing up. You know, it sounds so simplistic, but honestly, it's, it's not much more complicated than that. So now, if you're looking at it from, from a, let's call it a typical American viewpoint of, well, I could get this surgery, it sounds great. I won't need these drugs anymore. I won't have any more symptoms. I don't need to do anything to change my diet because the surgeon's going, yeah, no, I'm, I'll just go in there, you know, just wrap that, you know, <laughs> wrap that stomach around your esophagus, you're good, okay? That's, okay, that's the sunny side of the street. That's the optimistic viewpoint. Um, and you compare that to somebody like us, you know, finding somebody like us who says, listen, there's diet, there's lifestyle changes. The great news is, you know, symptom eradication is really, really high. Being able to get off medication is, you know, very, very high, very positive on that. Also, you're optimizing your digestive tract, which is optimizing your immune system, which is lessening your chance of most of the degenerative diseases we're trying to avoid in this world. Um, so there's a lot of plus points to optimizing digestion. You know, those are the pros and cons. And if somebody says, eh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always just the take a pill and I don't want to do anything with diet and lifestyle. Okay, but this is surgery. This is altering your, <laughs> your anatomy in a way that uh, whoever created this body did not intend and, and the side effects are there. And we're not talking about a long-term fix in most cases. So uh, that's the data I will have um, the support in my description as far as research, research etc. But I hear this a lot on my channel as far as, I'm, you know, I think I'm just going to get the surgery. You know, it sounds pretty simple and um, it sounds pretty foolproof. 
you know, nothing is foolproof in this world, but it's important to know the pros and the cons. So hopefully I did that. And uh, the other nice thing about a natural approach, let's say this, let's say you absolutely want the surgery, but you want to not fall into that category of people who have a failed surgery. Okay, good. So then per research, why does the surgery fail? The surgery fails because you have too much increased intra-abdominal pressure, putting so much pressure on that stomach that the wrap unwraps. Go, okay, good. So then you would do the kind of work we do, you know, and other functional medicine clinicians who are expert in this field, you would do that first and that would increase your likelihood of not having a failed surgery. There's that viewpoint as well. So hopefully I've described this well enough. Please uh, send me your questions and your comments. I love them. I answer all the comments that come my way. And um, if you enjoyed this or you think of somebody in your life who needs to hear this, send it to them, like it, and subscribe to the channel. And uh, we'll talk soon.